Hey guys, it's Jim. Thanks for tuning in. How you doing today? And um, welcome back. This is episode two in my series about cityscape workflows and the filters and the processing and the workflow steps that I take when editing my cityscape images. So the last one, I did a skyline of New York City and I've got a different skyline today. So let me go ahead and show you that photo and let's get started. Now, you may look at this and say, hey Jim, you did a skyline the other time and you're doing another one now, sort of like pick a different subject kind of thing. Completely fair point, but what I wanted to do is show you how you can edit with different filters. Uh, and the reason why is there's a whole lot of variety. There's 50 filters in Luminar and there's a lot of different ways to sort of skin the cat, as they say. And I wanted to demonstrate that because in the last video, I chose a number of different filters. I used Accent AI, uh, tone, brilliance and warmth, let me see here, color balance, an adjustable gradient, and a little bit of saturation and vibrance to uh, take the blue out of the foreground. Um, and this one, I'm going to use completely different filters. And the reason why is because I want to demonstrate the variety and the capability in Luminar. So if you look here at the right hand panel, I have the develop filter, I have golden hour, I have cross processing, dehaze, top and bottom lighting, and HSL. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in and start editing this photo using those filters. And now to point out, this is the skyline of Nashville. This is a single exposure from a set of brackets. I always fire brackets and um, I don't always use them, but I always fire them and so I always have them. But I'm gonna start out, I'm gonna add a little bit of warmth here because it was a really vibrant sunset, kind of golden hour. Uh, you know, not a whole lot different um, subject matter sort of, uh, than the last uh, video, right? So it is a skyline of a city, kind of a sunset golden hour, but very different. In this one, you have reflections, which we're gonna bring up. You have some stuff in the foreground here that's very different than uh, the last one of New York, where you had you know, different buildings, uh, and in my opinion, which required a crop to sort of accentuate the scene. I'm not gonna crop this one. Um, and this sky is a lot more filled out with cloud and that sort of thing. So to me, it's different, but uh, at the same time, I understand if you're saying, hey, it's another skyline. The truth is, skylines are one of my favorite subjects, so I shoot them all the time. But um, anyway, let's dive into this. I need to add a little contrast. I gotta look at my notes here. Um, highlights are a little too high, so I'm gonna take those down and something about like that. And I am gonna bring the shadows up pretty significantly. And that really helps brighten the scene a lot. Um, but I did that you know, in combination with taking the highlights down because I want to maintain a balance in the light. I want it to brighten the foreground, but I don't want the sky to get sort of uh, crazy looking. Um, I might add a little bit of clarity as well, and I think that ought to do it. And just the develop filter alone, we've gone from that to that. So you can see we've made a pretty good impact. Um, now, it, is, it does say develop, not raw develop. Um, when I edit my own photos, I always edit raw files or TIFF files if I'm coming let's say from Lightroom, I'll often just choose a TIFF file to edit in Luminar. All my videos I edit with JPEGs. I get that question a lot. Um, so this is a JPEG, that's why it says develop and not raw develop, okay? So there we go, golden hour. I'm gonna give a little boost there because that's really what I wanna, uh, can't even say it. What I wanna bring back is some of the uh, excitement and the intensity of the color that was there because it was gorgeous, frankly. So I think about like that will look good. Um, I'm gonna go ahead to dehaze. I'm gonna skip uh, cross-processing, add a little dehaze, and let me show you what that does to the sky. There's the before, there's the after, and also if you look in the water, there's the before and there's the after. It basically, as the name implies, it cuts through any atmospheric haze, and in my opinion, it works kind of like a polarizing filter. It takes some of the brighter parts, there it is again with it turned off, and it sort of darkens them, so to me it looks better. Um, now, having done that, I can see a spot here in the sky, and a couple of other spots. Those are easily fixed right here with the erase tool. I'm not gonna do that in this video because I don't wanna take the time, it's kind of immaterial, but I would absolutely recommend doing that if you have that. You could also come over here and erase some of these uh, bushes that are sticking out on the side, or if you wanted to crop, you could do that as well. Just a couple of ideas. Uh, okay, now I'm gonna go back to cross-processing. Now, I'm gonna choose Seattle, and the reason why is because it has a lot of pink and kind of uh, purple tones to it, which in my opinion is wonderful to use like in a blue hour, a sunset, or a golden hour type photo. It really helps accentuate that color. So I'm going to go to like about the mid 30s, something like, yeah, maybe low 30s. So something about like that. Let me show you the before 
and the after. You can see it, it took some of the edge off, for lack of a better word, that the golden hour applied, and it sort of softened up. You still got a lot of gold in it, which I like, but it brought back some of the blue and added some of that pinkish purple to make it a bit more of a sunset look, uh, more of a sort of twilight look than a golden hour look. So let me show you. There's the before, before we've done anything to the photo, and there's the after. And just hiding the cross-processing, there's the before, very golden, almost a little bit of a green tint in some ways, um, and the after with cross-processing. And that's a great way to shift colors in an image for a sunset. I use the Seattle setting and cross-processing all the time. So another reason I wanted to use different filters is just to give you some different ideas. Okay, bottom, I just wanna lift the exposure on the bottom a little bit, something about like that. And really I'm about done. I think the last thing I'm gonna do is take the saturation of the blue down uh, pretty significantly, and then just paint that into the rocks here. Because basically the rocks have picked up the blue color, and I don't know about you, but you know it's not an aquarium. I don't want blue rocks. Uh, this is a, uh, a cityscape shot. I want it to look good, and there's a little too much blue there. So I'm just masking that in, and I'm done. You can see over here kind of what the mask has done. But there's a before, uh, well actually, there's a before, and there's an after. So again, completely different filters than last time. Instead of using Accent AI and you know Tone to sort of manage some of the light, I used the Develop filter and Dehaze. Uh, instead of Brilliance and Warmth and Color Balance, uh, as in last time, this time I used Golden Hour and Cross Processing to really bring up the colors. Um, and instead of using the Adjustable Gradient to uh, lift the exposure in the foreground, here I used Top and Bottom Lighting. And the last one, I decreased the saturation in the uh, skyline and the bottom of the buildings in the last of the New York City uh, video. And I did that with the saturation of Vibrant slider. And here I did it with uh, reducing the blue in the HSL slider and then painting it in. There's a million ways to do things in Luminar. That's what I love about it. That's why I'm always having fun making videos, editing my photos. But this is another example of how to edit a skyline photo with a completely different set of filters. Just a new, fresh set of ideas for you. One last time, there's the before and there's the after. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you haven't yet subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and um, share with your friends. And uh, you know, leave a comment if you got any suggestions for me or other ideas. And I've got more uh, Cityscape tutorials coming. I'm just getting some images ready. I've also got a new preset pack I'm releasing. That'll be uh, announced here real soon. And I've got some other videos I'm going to work on as well. On top of that, I'm traveling. I'm going to go overseas for about 10 days to London. And I'm going to be shooting a ton of these kind of things. Uh, cityscapes, all kinds of stuff. So you'll be seeing a lot of that stuff coming up when I get back. So thanks for watching. I appreciate you tuning in. Have a great one and adios.